Lou and Mrs. Boyd, starring Joseph Curtin and Alice Ford. All sorts of people are going around making all sorts of surveys about the habits of the American male and female. If they ever questioned Sam and Jerry North, they'd learn something that would make their hair stand on end. For instance, in the morning, Jerry prefers regaining consciousness by degrees. But Pam, on the other hand, hold on to your pencil, Dr. Kinsey. Pam is as gay, fresh, and romantic as a lark. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with a wonderful guy. Pamela, you are not Mary Martin, and I am not Ezio Pinza. So will you do me a favor? Don't be so gay until I've had my first cup of coffee. Anything, my sweet. Oh, I'm sorry. You're male, dear. Mm. Now drink your coffee. I'm in love. I'm in love Pam, I'm in love. please. Here, here's a letter for you. Maybe you would like to read it, dear, while I have my coffee. Uh, thanks, sir. Dear Mrs. Norris, you don't know me, but I'm the type of woman who believes in calling a spade a spade. And ours, Jerry. Who's it from, dear? My mother, you beast. Oh, what did I say? Oh, nothing. Jerry met me at the Rumba Taxi Dance Hall, where I'm trying to make an honest buck as a dime a dance hostess. After 20 cents worth with Jerry, I know it's love and it's mutual. What's your mother right, dear? She's taken up the rumba, you... I think you and I ought to sit down and discuss it like civilized people so that we can dispense with Jerry to our mutual satisfaction. Yours sincerely, Honey Jones. Well... Well, let me see the letter. Oh, no, you don't. Where are you going? Do I ask you where you've been? Will you tell me your worthy lady daughter? Pam, where are you going? I may be going home to Mother. Pam, Pam, come back here. Is that you, darling? No, it's me, sweetheart. Oh. Your missus just took the elevator. I'm glad for the chance of having you all to myself. Who are you? Tony Jones. You recognize the name? No, and what do you mean coming Does, out? Does uh, honey mean anything to you? I never touch the stuff. But you call honey stuff, wise guy. She's my wife. Listen, my name is Jerry North. N-O-R-T-H. I know. Bad enough, my wife working at a taxi dance hall. But I ain't going to stand for customers getting fresh with her. That I ain't going to stand for. I tell you, Mr. Jones, I've never... Shut up and listen. If I find out that you've been seeing her again, I'll kill you with my own bare hands. Now, stand up. What for? Because I want to knock you down. <laughs> That's the name on the door, isn't it? Your name's going to be mud when I get through with you. Oh, you must be Mrs. North. Won't you come in, dear? Don't you dare me, you Jezebel. The name's Honey. Come on in. Oh. I'm kind of disappointed that Jerry didn't come along with you. Why? Just so you could both laugh in my face? Oh, you've been seeing too many movies. Listen, why don't you call him up and tell him to come over? So we can talk it over cozy. Oh, no. After all he's done, seeing you when he says he's working late. Now, wait, Mrs. Moore. I might as well tell you. Your husband and I, we don't mean a thing to each other. It's all a job. Oh, that's a likely story. Honest. I've been writing a book about my experiences. It's a great book. Oh, I... that's an old line if I ever heard one. Come up and see my manuscript sometime. That's the truth, Mrs. Moore. I've been trying to see Mr. North at his office, but I couldn't get past his secretary. Oh, that's why I wrote you that letter. I was sure it would bring you and Mr. North a running. Then I'd be able to give him my manuscript. It's a wonderful story, all about my experiences. Wait, I got it right here in my desk. Right. What's right here? Oh, it was. I tell you, it was. Sure, I had it. I... Sure, sure. Gone. Stolen, stolen. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, that's easy. Make up another story. Oh, you fool. Get out of here. I've got to find out who took it. Stop acting with me, honey. 
Does this convince you that I'm not asking, Mrs. Moss? You can put away that gun, honey. I'm going. How many gadgets do I get? Maybe he's telling the truth. Who? And then it... Well, go ahead. What are you standing here for? Take me home. No. No, hold it. Now, what's the matter? That's my husband. He's going into the building. Oh, take me away from here. Well, will you tell me for the last time where your home is? Who said anything about taking me home? Take me to police headquarters. <laughs> No, Mrs. North, don't carry on so. Well, why shouldn't I, Mullins? I've every right to. Going into her building and, and in broad daylight. Well, no, there might be a very simple explanation to it, Mrs. North. Yes, of course there is. He's going up there to see honey. Mullins, where have I failed as a wife? You tell me. Oh, you haven't, Mrs. North. You've been a sweet, devoted help. Oh. Oh, there, there, Mrs. North, please don't carry on. I'm... Sure, it's easy for you to say there, there. You're not in love with Jerry. Here, now, take a sip of this coffee while he answers the telephone. Sergeant Mullins, homicide. Mullins, this is Jerry North. Oh, Mr. North. It's your husband, Mrs. North. Oh, let me at that. Hold on, now, Mrs. North, you'll get your chance. Well, Mr. North, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. A fine little woman like Mrs. North, you won't telephone me. Mr. Mullins, listen to me. I'm over at a girl's house. Her name's Honey Jones. Oh, have you no shame, man? Mullins, I'm trying to tell you something. You sure got a lot of explaining to do, Mr. North? Honey Jones, indeed. Oh. Honey, Mullins, get over here as fast as you can. She's been shot to death. Oh. Mr. Kelmons, after that gorilla Tony slugged me, I wanted to find out what it was all about. I looked up Honey's name, came here, and found her lying across her bed. Mm. Tell us the truth, Jerry. We'll stick by you. I'm a woman, the woman you once loved. I'll forgive you. Oh, for goodness sake, hey, Pam, stop behaving like Joan Crawford. But it all seems to tie together with what you told us about that book business, Mrs. North. Oh, I hope for Jerry's sake that you're right, Mullen. Ah, uh, Mrs. North, I might as well tell you now, Mr. North is a darling boy, and so far as I'm concerned, he's not under suspicion at all. Oh, Jerry, darling, I'm so happy for you. Now she's Betty Davis. Now, if this Tony fellow was out avenging his wife's dubious honor, I wonder where we could find a men friend. The Rumba Taxi Dance Hall. Mullins, if I could get a job as a hostess at the Rumba Dance Palace, I might be able to get some information from the other girls as to where we could find Honey's husband. I absolutely forbid it. Let the police worry about the murderer. Ah, oh, ten cents a dance, big boy. Come on, handsome. Buy the little girl a fistful of tickets. Now, Pam. Good idea, Mrs. Norton. I absolutely forbid my wife to enter one of those places. Ah, oh, forget your wife. Big boy, you're talking to cuddles now. She'll make you forget. A bad cuddles. A bad. Uh, uh, turn around again. <sighs> Well, uh, do I get the job, Mr. Snark? The girls all call me Eric. Uh, hey, you fill out that evening gown pretty good. Oh, uh, thank you, kind sir. Come here, baby. Let's try a little dance together. Um, there, there's no music. Who needs it? We can make beautiful music together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fresh. Oh, the little girl is blushing. Well, you'll loosen up later. Now, look, baby, let me give you a couple of pointers. First of all, keep your eyes and ears open. What do you mean? When a guy's dancing with you, just let him talk. Remember what he said. What guy? Any guy, Simon. You never know what you can learn about a guy. What's the old expression? Knowledge is power? Uh, I think I understand, Eric. 
You and I will get along, baby. Feel free to come into my office anytime and we can talk. I'll do that little thing. Uh, honey said you were a regular guy. Honey? What do you know about honey? Well, don't my arm. You hurt me. What's the matter with you? Well, you're a friend of honey's, huh? Well, I shouldn't hold that against you. What does she do? Nothing. But she ain't the type of girl I like working in my place. I fired her. Well, that's funny. I saw her this morning, and she said she was coming to work tonight. You was here tonight. She was here tonight? Sure. She left a few minutes before you came in. Well, I guess I better be getting out on the floor. Wait a minute. I ain't letting you go yet. What's the matter? What did I do? You didn't do nothing. I just want to have a drink. Oh. I keep my good stuff on the lock and key. I see. What's that? Scotch. Uh, no, that blue-covered thing. It's nothing. <laughs> Looks like a book somebody's been writing. Are you a writer, Alice? Have your drink. <laughs> Some of my best friends are writers. Good luck, Cuddles. Honey once told me she was writing... Bring it on and get out of here. Uh, well, you only live once. Yeah, just remember that, Cuddles. Just remember that. Take it easy, Mr. North. Mrs. North's doing fine. Yeah. I've got a hunch we'll find the murderer here yet. This is easy. In finding out things by setting the suspects up against the wall. At least we know now where Honey's manuscript is. Well, why don't we arrest this Eric character and get it over with? He lied when he told Pam Honey was here tonight. Be patient. We will, Mr. North. I really believe you're enjoying this. Oh, oh no, don't be silly, Mr. North. It's all in the light of duty. I'm trying to work for up. Hi. My, what a lovely girl. Huh? My little one with a black dress. She's built Listen, by... Listen, brother, she happens... Uh, to... My friend here don't like this place. He wants to leave. Well, I can hardly blame him. He's the quiet type, like myself. Uh, this is the first time I've been up here. Uh, it's a way of keeping out of the rain. Uh, haven't I seen you someplace before, Mr. Uh, Hornswigger is the name. Hornswigger. It's not very likely you have seen me before. Unless, of course, you've been in Connecticut. And that's where I'm from. Yes, sir. Oh, oh dear me. What's the matter, Mr. Hornswigger? Nothing. Well, I was wondering, you said, oh, dear me. I was just looking the girls over. You see anyone you like? And not tonight. There was a beauty over here a couple of nights ago, about five feet two with eyes of blue and golden hair the color of honey. As a matter of fact, her name was honey. You'd like it. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, but where is she tonight? Oh, you know her. Well, I danced with her once. Charming girl. I thought you said you were never up here before. Oh, dear me, did I say that? Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I'm going over to the bar and have a drink. He's worth investigating, Mr. North. Hello, Nolan. Have you found out anything yet? Well, not about the murder, Mr. North, but you see the man going over to the bar? His name's Hornswinger. Get him to dance with you. Find out anything you can. Well, I'll try, Nolan. I absolutely forbid it. I danced with him myself. I had to see him. Now, listen, Mr. Broadway. Uh, hiya, handsome. Uh, uh, go away, little girl. I'm not interested in dancing. Ah, uh, come on, handsome. Be a little... Will you please stop bothering me? Oh, you're the fidget kind, I guess. That ain't the way honey said you were. What? Oh. Uh, shall we dance? Delighted. What do you know about honey? I'm only a best friend. That's what I know about honey. Say, yeah, you dance divine. Your name is? Uh, they call me Cuddles. I like to cuddle up to my dad. Like this. Uh, you like it? Uh, dear me. Uh, have you seen Honey lately? Uh, no, I haven't. Are you expecting her up here? No, uh, not particularly. Uh, that is, I was. Uh, uh, she uh, won't be here tonight. You don't seem surprised. <laughs> Other fish in the sea, you know. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, Honey was in a class by herself. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, well, she wasn't like us girls. 
and she was more the intellectual side. Well, you know, she even wrote a book. Mr. Holtzberg is a honey so tied to hurting me. Oh, no, dear, I am sorry. Uh, what do you know about the book? Uh, what do I know about it? What does Sears know about robots? I practically helped him with it. Oh, now, listen to me, my dear. I pay a lot of money to get a hold of that manuscript. Say, you are a culture type man, ain't you? But you don't have to worry no more, Mr. Holmes, because she can't blackmail you no more. You know why? Because someone's still there. Careful, Mr. Holmes, maybe you stepped on my toe. Oh, dear me, what were you saying? I'm saying, Mr. Uh, never mind. I heard you. When did it happen? It happened this morning. You ought to know. I... I don't feel like dancing anymore, Cuddle. Uh, will you excuse me? I wouldn't try to leave this place if I were you, Mr. Hornswigger. That gentleman over there is my husband, and the other one is from the police. Oh. Oh, dear me, I... I think I'm going to... I'm going to run. Oh, oh, no, you can't. You can't do that. Don't What's the matter, ma'am? Yeah. He's fainted right in my arms. I told him about Honey's being murdered. Here, put his arm around me. Take him into the lounge. Come along, Mr. Hodge, will you? I'm surprised. Jerry, I think Mr. Hodge's figure could have done it. Honey was blackmailing him. Come on, let's tell him all of this. And then I'm getting you out of here. Jerry, not yet. Maybe it wasn't Mr. Horn's wigger at all. But you just said that... Well, I know, but her husband could have done it because he's jealous. Eric could have done it because he just looked me. And then there's Mr. Horn's wigger. Yeah, come on. Mullins. 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 Jerry, look. He's unconscious. Mr. Horn's wigger is gone. Are you all right, Mullen? Oh, of course I'm not all right. What in the seat from the little bag? Will you take it by hand, Adam? What happened, Mullen? I let him down to the couch and turned him back to get him a glass of water and he must have slugged me over the shame of it. It runs like that. Hey, Mullen, where are you going? Outside, I want to find out when you saw me. Poor Mullen. Jerry, look, the window's open. Good. There's a ledge running all around the building. Let's see where it leads to, darling. It may lead us to the murderer. This ledge will lead us into trouble. Hey, Pam, get off that ledge. Jerry, there's a window about ten feet to the right of me. All right, steady now. I'll go with you. Oh, oh. oh. you'll be dizzy if I look down. For oh, goodness sake, don't look. Walk slowly and hug the side of the building. The way you hug your dance customers all night. Uh, this is no time for you to be jealous. Oh, be quiet, darling. Come into the window. Maybe somebody in that room. Jerry, it's Eric Coffin. And there is somebody in there. There's Mr. Hornswigger stretched out on the rug. You don't think he's dead? I think we'll be if we stay on this ledge much longer. Let's see if this window will open. Good. Hop in there. <laughs> Easy, Jerry. There's blood on Mr. Horns for his head. Still breathing. What's the idea of coming into my office? Oh, uh, Eric. Who are you, mister? I'll tell you who I, I am. He's a customer, Eric. My office is off limits to customers. Now, beat it. Not until we call the police. There's a telephone on his desk, Sam. I thought the name was Cuddle. That's enough of that. She's my wife, Mr. Snark, and my name's Norm. I thought there was something phony about you, Cuddles. Who are you, and what do you want? We don't want very much, Mr. Snark. All we want is to find out who murdered Honey and and why you did it. Oh, ain't you the cute one? Her manuscript is in that desk, Jerry. Well, we'll take a little look. No, you won't, mister. Not even a peep. I ain't running no circulating library. But I am going to turn this office into a shooting gallery if you don't stand where you are. Careful, he's got a gun. I'm hardly breathing. I can put a stop to that, too. Who's that other guy that was with you, mister? That's the police. The police? You really fouled me up. Now I lose my license. All right, you can relax, Snort. I'm putting the gun away. I thought I could keep it quiet, but it's too late now. You can get on that phone and call the police. You mean you, you're confessing? What kind of a jerk do you take me for? I didn't do it. You stole a manuscript from her. Sure, I wanted to read it. I find out she's running a little blackmail racket on the side. I told her if she didn't cut it out, I'd mess her up real good. 
I've got to protect my customers. You've got a novel way of protecting your customers, Mr. Snark. Oh, you mean Hornswick? Uh-huh. Well, what would you do, Mr. North, if some wild-eyed little jerk comes jumping through your window and accuses you of blackmailing? <laughs> Who's there? Mr. Sergeant Mullins. Come in, Mullins. Tony. Uh, my friend, it's for you. Who is he, Jack? Honey's husband. He's the one who hit me. I remember when I was in high school, Eric, we used to sing a song that was something about the punishment fitting the cry. You played around with honey, Mr. North, so I hit you. But you, Eric, you murdered her. So what you're getting is going to fit the crime perfect. You're crazy, Tony. I didn't do it. Put down that gun. Stop it, Jerry. Listen, Tony. Now you listen, Mr. North. Listen to the noise that gun makes when it kills a rat. <laughs> What's going on here? Get up, Horn Swigger. You're just in time to see a man shot to death. Oh, I didn't do it. I swear. I know it. It's Snark who I'm giving it to. Listen to the reason, Tony. Turn around and stand up against that wall. Jerry, I can't bear it. Tony, you're making a big mistake. No, I'm not making a mistake. There's a bullet in Honey's chest. She's dead. And this is the gun that did it. And that's a rat who pulled the trigger. Tony, I... I can't let an innocent man die. You say she was killed with that gun. It was lying right next to her. So I did it, Tony. Jerry, but you didn't. I'm sorry, Sam. She was a devil. I couldn't get her out of my blood. I couldn't stand the thought of anyone else having it. I don't believe a word of it. You're starting to save this jerk's life. Am I? Well, look in the magazine of the gun. You'll see two bullets still in there. I couldn't know that unless I handled the gun. Well, I'll see you in a second. Get him, Eric. Thanks, Mullen. Oh, Jerry. For a moment, I almost believed you. Believe what, Mrs. North? Jerry confessed. Oh, but he didn't do it. Good for him. Thanks, Mr. North. Tony's your murderer, Sergeant. And he's a madman, Sergeant. Horns, we get so there you are, you little oh, one. Don't do it, dear being, Sergeant. You must find it in your heart to forgive me for knocking you out. I was frightened. I, I, I acted on impulse. Oh, Molly, forget about him. Tony's your murderer. No, I didn't do it. I tell you, Eric killed her, Sergeant. He tried to turn her into a blackmailer. Sure, I hated what Honey did working here in this creek joint. I was taking care of her men friends in my own way. At least she was mine part of the time. But I wouldn't see her at all if she was in jail on a blackmail rap. That's where she belonged. I tell you no, Sergeant. She wasn't interested in making go that way. She really had the right in box. He's right, Mullins. Honey wouldn't have gone to all the trouble to see me if she weren't serious about getting a manuscript published. Eric is the real blackmailer. He killed her for the manuscript. I tell you, I was only taking it to read. She was the blackmailer. Is he the liar, Sergeant? Blackmail never entered that dear sweet girl's head. He has the book in his possession, I'm sure. I was willing to pay $10,000 to keep it out of print. He wouldn't take it. He wanted 20000 He hit me when I insisted. Oh, oh dear me, my head. Oh, you kids got to figure it out real smart, haven't you? You got yourself the perfect patsy. Well, you'll do until somebody better comes along. You're coming down to headquarters with me. Oh, just a minute, Mom. Mr. Hornswigger, you didn't approve of Honey's book, did you? Well, of course I didn't, Mrs. North. It would have ruined me. I offered her money, but that didn't interest her. Recognition as a writer was much, much more important to her. Uh, I suspected, of course, that this snark fellow had a copy of the manuscript, and his motive was blackmail. So I was willing to pay him. Well, that's clear to me. Thank you, Mr. North. Well, it's not clear to me. Mr. Hornsfigger, when did you first learn that Honey was murdered? I... When you told me on the dance floor, don't you remember? What are you driving at, Mrs. Ork? Only this, Mullins. He was willing to pay me for the original manuscript of that book before I told him that Honey was dead. Oh, why should you do that, Mr. Hornswigger? Honey could still write another one. Mr. Hornswigger, you were interested in that manuscript because you knew that Honey couldn't write another one. Because you knew that Honey was murdered before I told you. You killed her. Oh, excuse me. You realize what you're saying? I think I do, Horn. Oh, hey, wait, wait for me. Hey, oh, oh, fuck you. Let him go, Tony. Oh, oh, let him go. Oh, oh, oh. Horn, you're you're going to confess. Yes, 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 I did it. I did it. She wouldn't listen to reason. Horn Swigger's an honored name in Connecticut. My reputation would have been ruined. I, I, I had to kill her. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
How are you feeling this morning, darling? The usual. Oh, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm yeah, in love. I told you I was feeling the usual. Will well, you cut it out at least until I've had my first cup of coffee? Oh, did you have a hard night at the office? Yes, I was all hard. Oh, poor dear. Uh, by the way, when I hung your suit up this morning, darling, I found these tickets in your pocket. Tickets? Yes, from the Rue de la Paix dance hall. Oh, oh, really? I, I wonder how they could have gotten there. <laughs> I'll give you just two seconds to think up a good excuse. Well, as a matter of fact, uh -huh. oh, now, Pam, really, I was going to tell you about it. Uh -huh. Mullins asked me to go up with him. Mm. He wanted to do a little investigation about the blackmail business, and I helped him. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I really didn't enjoy it a minute of it, Pam. You know, those hot, stuffy dance halls. Oh, it was quite a chore, those dark lights in my eyes. The Adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North are brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>